Hello everybody! Hi everybody! Welcome to Craft Attic K. I'm Carla. I'm Sam. And I'm Rachel. Rachel's our middle daughter. Um, here with us today, first time debuting on our videos. So um, we wanted to come to you in this time to um, give you a little bit to feast your eyes upon a lot of haul. Got a few whips, got a couple finishes, got some books to talk about, and maybe some activities that you can use. Um, today's video is going to be much different than our normal format, and that's because why not shake things up a little bit? So we're going to start off with our giveaways from our last video. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you everyone who commented regarding Ronnie and lifting him up in your thoughts. Um, his test results and biopsies came back better than we anticipated. Um, it is not cancer, and so that was a lift off of his mind, I'm sure. Um, and it turns out it's an infection that he's getting antibiotics for. So um, we are so blessed and so glad and so happy for him and sending him all of our love and hugs to Ronnie. And if you're not sure who Ronnie is, check out Garon Toten Bag, check out Sunshine Stitchers. Um, I'll put the links below. Um, because uh, he debuts and he makes all these beautiful bags that you see me talking about um, in our videos. Is that where I got my bag from? That is where you got that oh. bag from. Okay, let me show it. Ronnie little... made that bag. Yeah, hold it up. There you go. There it is. Ronnie made it for me. Well, right, made it for my mom who gave it to me. Thank you, Ronnie, and I hope you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, things have been a little bit crazy here. Um, so, just to kind of give you a synopsis of what's been going on, um, Samantha's not had school with all the closures, so Samantha's got all kinds of free time. Dream. Unfortunately, mom does not have all that free time because I work in healthcare. Um, so, just to put it in perspective, um, we live in Pennsylvania. We're not in a technically hot spot, but we do have a lot of cases. We're not as a dense area as New York is. We, I manage a home care agency. I am a nurse. I'm prepared to go into the field if I, if, if it's warranted. Um, my nurses are in the field now. They're making visits to patients' homes. We are preparing for hospitals to be discharging um, non, non critical patients. Um, and so we're preparing for that. I just want to give a shout out. I know you're seeing a lot of coverage in the news, and I'm not going to talk about social isolation. I'm not going to talk about all of those things, but I am going to talk about the need that the healthcare workers truly have for masks, gowns, gloves, anything like that that we have. And that's one of the reasons why we've asked um, companies. I've reached out to my local uh, nail salons, auto body shops. Um, even our local Dollar Tree has set some hand sanitizer aside for me to be able to purchase for my nurses. Um, and, and we are truly blessed in our community that our community stands behind the company that I work for, which is a small company. Um, and we've been in business for 70 years. So um, we are well known in our community and we are out there taking care of people. Um, so don't forget about... It's not just hospital. We have our first responders, our home care workers. They're going into people's homes every day. Um, we are pre-screening. We're asking um, specific questions in order to ensure our staff are safe as well as our patients are safe and we don't do any unnecessary risks. Um, our typical clientele is the elderly community and they don't pose the risks um, because typically they're not traveling because part of having home care is you have to be homebound. Um, it's the families that are coming to visit them that should stay home. Uh, the ones that are out and about that can bring that into the elderly's home. So please heed the advice of the government, of the local Department of Health, of CDC, and please stay home. Um, practice your social distancing. Get on Zoom with virtual stitchers. Uh, you know, get into Facebook and, and FaceTime people and friends and call people on the phone. It's more than just using your thumbs actually dial a number and have a phone conversation. So, um, yeah. that being said, <laughs> these guys have been very inventive. Um, so this is typically a weekend where Rachel would be at National Guard Drill, and normally when she has her drill weekend, she stays at our house, um, and they have canceled <laughs> her drill. Yeah, I come in at like 9 o'clock at night, and I leave at like 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, I give her a place to rest her weary head. Um, 
as part of the National Guard, some of them in our state have been activated. She is on alert, um, has been notified over the weekend. She's on alert. Yeah, I was supposed to have drill, um, I don't know, what's today's date? The 20th, I was supposed, yeah, I was supposed to have drill this weekend. Um, I was supposed to come, I was supposed to be gone f Thursday and come back Sunday, and then I was supposed to leave again for training next week, for the following week. I was supposed to go to Indianapolis, Indiana for some other training, and uh, they canceled all that, thank God, because I did not want to be stuck in an airport with a bunch of people. So, good. Yeah. But, yeah. And they told us to uh, get, have a go bag ready, have all your clothes and stuff, because uh, there's a really good chance that they're going to activate us. And I think they're utilizing our National Guard, at least in our area, for the drive-through testing. So, I'm getting off of that subject. We're not going to talk about that subject, but we are going to share some things that may be some good ideas that you can do with your family while you're locked in um, to kind of get your minds off things and maybe some things you can do remotely with your grandchildren by a phone call and um, it's quite interesting what these girls have come up with. So, like I said, out of, out of our normal practice, we're doing our giveaways first from our last video. So, Samantha, tell me who is winning the Ronnie mini bag. This is with the hands. Let me put the kindergarten. And she's actually set up on the iPad next here. Yeah. Gail Phillips. What's it say? Great to see you ladies with another great video. Sending positive vibes through to Ronnie for good news. Would love to stitch the house. All right, Gail, well, you got well, well, Ronnie's well. mini bag. So we will get this out to you. I will put our email address below. Um, make sure that you send me an email with your physical address and we will get this out to you. And sure. what are we doing next? House. House. That's the schoolhouse, isn't it? This is Home Sweet Home. Our me? next giveaway from last week, and I'm hoping you can see this, we're in a different spot. So we're in actually in my living room because we have Tiny. sliding glass doors in front of us to give more light. And you can see the two windows. That's, that's the living room. This <laughs> is the odd room. The odd room. So um, you can kind of see behind us a different setup. We're trying to utilize our natural light. Um, this was a Star House in the Pines kit in Bixby. And the keyword for this was house. We had 11 commenters, and who won? Tana Par Parente. Parente? P-A-R-E-N-T-E. -E. -E. And what did she say? I would like to stitch the house and the zoo. Get well soon, Ron. I got a quick All question. All right, yes. Didn't you tell me that uh, like this is how teachers would use to teach the alphabet? They, yeah. Back in the, when they rode dinosaurs to school? Back when, <laughs> I don't think they read dinosaurs at school, but um, or walked. I don't you'll know. see like samplers and <laughs> stuff have buggy. a lot of alphabets because yeah. they would practice stitching the alphabets to stitch on the linens, their oh, family linens. Didn't you say they did it on napkins or like something yeah, like that? Yeah, linens. Linen? Handkerchiefs, yes, that's what they used to do. So they would practice. They, those are called um, samplers. You see a lot of samplers. It's got little motifs and you'll see some today because there's some in this pile like, in front of me. like the crochet samples okay. at Good. Joanne's, right? Like, huh? You, well, when you say little samples, I'm thinking like the crochet stitched little block that Joanne has to show you no. what the arms like. No, I'm going to so enlighten like you on samplers. Like, when we go through haul, I'll, t I'll show you and you'll be like, oh, okay. So congratulations, Tanya. Tanya, I'm learning. <laughs> In the Tanya, T A Y N A, parenthes. Sorry okay. for butchering your names. I am so sorry. Okay, so the next one is okay. our zoo pre stamped quilt. And oh, congratulations, Karen Gonzalez. It's a zoo yeah, out Karen. there. Karen! <laughs> and Karen says it's a zoo out there. So <laughs> congratulations, Karen. That's cute. I think I have your address. Um, if you want to make sure, you can just send me an email real quick with your mailing address, and we will get this out to you this week. So congratulations to all our winners. Um, so I'm going to set these giveaways here off to the side. And I wrote your names down in our StitchCon book. Um, speaking of Stitch Con, I don't know that we're going to be going this year. Um, with the way things are ramping up, it might work. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you need a tea? I, no. Okay. Um, I don't think that I'm going to be able to attend um, or be able to get the time off at this point in time. So I am more than likely we're going to have to cancel our Stitch Con trip and hope we can get in next year. So. 
since we, let's see, I'm looking at my, my cheat sheet here. I decided I talk an awful lot, and Samantha doesn't talk hardly at all. Sorry. So, in this episode, as we are... We are splitting it half and half. <laughs> Samantha... I am not doing the whole video. ...is going to take over part of this video. Yes. And so, everybody, I hope you have your drinks, whether it's water, tea, or coffee. That's my drink. I know that's your drink. <laughs> Where's your drink? I don't have my drink. Wow, it's poor planning. Poor You're planning. Far. We're going to sit back and enjoy the ride and see what Samantha would like to share with us. I got an idea. We can have a little Rachel segment when Samantha can't talk. And then I'll be like, uh, so this thing, um, as you can see, Mom is doing. And, and I can explain. Stay how you with the flow <laughs> over here. For somebody that's a guest, she's awfully birdy. Just okay. too talkative. What do I do? What should we do I am first? Such a You're up, child. Samantha. You run this. Whatever you want to do. It's your video. Okay. Well, it's not my video. It's our video. Okay. I haven't had school for the past week, so I've had a lot of free time. And in that free time, I have been reading my books a lot more than stitching. Haven't stitched in a while, but I'm enjoying my books a lot. And I finished my Wayward Son book. Yeah, um, I there's gonna be a third book soon, hopefully. I mean, there's a third one coming, but I'm really excited because they left me on a cliffhanger. And what's this about? Um, wizards go, generally, yeah, yeah. Wizards go on a vacation across the Americas, pretty much. Okay. Visiting the Muggles, I see them. All and, right. Uh, it gets kind of hectic, a little bit, and their vacation kind of gets a little bit. Less of a vacation and more of a mission. So it's okay. a sequel to the Carry On book. All right. And um, I'm currently reading. What Rachel's in? Currently reading the Hot Zone. <laughs> um, Mom read it. Rachel read part of it and quit. And my dad read it. Basically, it's Ebola. Yeah, I realized that's all I really know. <laughs> I realized it wasn't gonna tell me how they cured Ebola, so I stopped reading. It is based on a true story with the Ebola outbreak. Yes. I've been a nurse for a long time. This is probably my fourth. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that. This is probably <laughs> my fourth epidemic that I've been uh, a nurse and particip being a participant. I guess you don't have any choice. But um, I do remember the Ebola outbreak. So. so I'm currently reading that. Hopefully I'll get it finished. I'm already close to page 100, and I've only been reading it for like, two days okay and a little bit of a third day because i finished that and i just i finished my wayward son and immediately went to that because i wanted to keep reading before i went to bed so those are my books what are you reading mom oh thanks for asking samantha how's it like what how you like running a video um actually i finished the the last time we talked about the girl who lived i finished that wow what a fantastic book and then <clears throat> i started this one it was yeah. on her bookshelf, right? Yeah, it was on my shelf. It's Patricia Cornwell's Postmortem. It's, I'm not finished with it. I'm on chapter 10. But as I've been reading it, I think I've read this before. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I must have forgot that I read it before. But this is the first book in a series of books, I understand. Um, but it is about a medical examiner, and there's a serial killer, and that's how she, um, her name is Kay Scarpetta, and it's how she kind of the things she does to try and identify who the serial killer is. So, um, it's a good book. It's it's not like the other two that I've really highly rated. Um, I don't know that I would give it five stars, but it is a good um, book so far. Maybe it'll get better in the second half. I'm only about halfway through. So, that's what I've been working on. But I've been doing, like I said, a lot of other stuff and getting home late and just kind of tired I just delve into stitching or I just go to bed so <clears throat> to me Rachel you I'm gonna be anything? listening to that all week <coughs> sorry um I haven't been reading in like a few weeks but um I was reading the Earl and the Enchantress and basically what it's about is um like the Earls and the Duchess and Dukes and the lords and everything, it's kind of like set in that time, and this guy has, I guess, this really dark history, and he's kind of like the male version of a spinster, and then he meets this girl that's like, 
really outspoken and talking about books and trying to have an intelligent conversations and at that time women were just supposed to be you know women and taking care of the household while the guy did whatever so lo and behold um they fall in love and that's kind of where i took a break because i was like okay well they got married thank gosh and um <laughs> You still don't know what his history is, but he it must be something big. I haven't figured it out yet. But that's what I've been reading, and I think it's from Paulette Golden, I think. But it's really good. It was in my um, my school's book club for last month, and I'm almost finished with it. But I'm working full-time and doing school full-time. So. And I'm playing on the computer. Barely, rarely. Mm. Okay. I've also been making dinner... All yeah. week, pretty much. Samantha's been cooking. Telling you. I figured out one thing. Um, my oldest daughter, Megan, who's not here, used to think we had a cleaning fairy that came in at night and picked up all the toys and cleaned my house. God, I wish it was real. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other Boy. two, these two, have figured out that that's not necessarily the case. Um, there's not a cleaning fairy because I learned from that mistake. I think Rachel's struggling with that lesson. I think she just right. can't find my address. You know, I went to the post office and did the tra change of address. I don't think she got that update. Uh-huh, the cleaning fairy didn't find you? Not yet. Well, then this one had a boyfriend who... I'm pointing. I have the I'm boyfriend. I'm backwards. Rachel had the boyfriend um, in her high school days that would oh. come over <laughs> and did oh. not know how to cook, did not know how Jesus, to make a, that man. something <laughs> simple as a peanut butter sandwich, was very much, um, Mommy. mom took care of everything for him. And I had a lot of concerns about, you know, my job as a parent is to make sure that these girls are a functioning member of society. <laughs> this man was so wasteful. Like, he'd gone through, like, a, like half a bottle of soap one time we went, like, camping. Oh, yeah. And I'm so, like, what are you doing? Yeah. So we won't talk about specifics. Let's just say that I made that my mission to make sure that these girls know how to cook after that experience. Um, Meanwhile, sorry. Rachel kind so, of cooks up her dinner half the time. <laughs> um, I'd like to say I'm inventive, and I pretend that every time I cook is like Mission Impossible. You're but a Lushki experiment? Oh, yeah. I, I'm just saying, this one, mm -hmm, uh, she don't follow a recipe. She just makes up. She goes along. Um, cabbage and lettuce <laughs> are not the same thing. <laughs> Listen, I was hungry. I think I blacked out in the middle of it. I was just going just going yeah cabbage and lettuce are not the same thing nobody's um, uh gotten food poisoning or spit out my food so i guess i'm good at she's doing pretty good so i'm doing better, pretty okay. good so yes you have a recipe i had this clean. you know what i made some firecracker meatballs with like sriracha and like it was so freaking good ask jesse he'll tell you uh-huh best darn thing ever mm, mm, mm. okay to make it so that's fun. the cooking and we got chili cooking right now on the stove and i can smell it it smells so good in this house i wish we had smell a vision okay Okay. You're up next. I mean, like, this is your video. Okay. Rachel, do you want to talk about the pictures? Um, I mean, you can ask anything. Nobody knows me here. Because I'm the middle child. <laughs> the middle child. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Uh, okay. Well, so I have, like, the, the, I'm going to edit this out, but I've got, like, little, oh, goodness. The book. Are you going to put pictures of yes. the picture, like, tag it on there? Okay. Yes. Do, do you want me to show this or no? I don't know. Because, like, this is, oh, I just passed it. This is what his picture looks like in, in my book. Okay. Oh, okay. Not All right, there. so what they're over here chit-chatting about is something that is something you could adapt in your own situation if you have children Mom, at home. Mom, Samantha's talking. Let her do it. No. Go ahead. I don't know what you're going to go on about. I'm talking about your police sketching. If you don't, I'll do it. Just, just go do ahead. it. Richie, you okay. should talk. Okay, so with the whole quarantine and people are not able to go to school or some people aren't allowed to go to work. I know at least where I work there's a lot of parents worried about their children. So something me and Samantha have been doing like this weekend while under quarantine and social distancing kind of. is I thought it would be a fun idea to try and do like a police sketch. So I'm in school right now for intelligence focused on criminal intelligence so I was like Samantha let's do like a police sketch, right? So I looked up one of these, one of the serial killers. His name's like Robert Ber Berdella. Berdella. Or, or Berdella, it, unless he's Yeah, it's Hispanic. I just can't really pronounce it very well. And um, so I looked up a picture of him, and I tried to explain to Samantha from memory what he looked like, 
and she drew a picture of him. And then we did it vice versa where she picked somebody and then I had to draw after what she was describing. And then this is what we got so far. So that's the one that I drew. Here's um, what she drew of based off of the killer. description <clears throat> the necklace of the serial killer. Yeah, the necklace. Do you have a picture of it? Um, I have it in like my coloring book here. Uh, so when I looked up a picture on the computer and then the one in, in my coloring book, it's a little different. I will show, we'll put a picture next to it. So, but yeah, there's. Yeah, so the, the coloring book has like the spike necklace and that's what I was remembering when I told her about it, but. Yep. The actual colored in picture on Google Images looks a lot better. And better. Samantha can pull in a picture when she's editing of um, what he actually looks like in real life. And this is Zendaya. Zendaya. Who drew this one? Rachel. Alright, so Rachel drew this one based off of Samantha's description. And Rachel is really trying to get me close to this guy. I was. I was trying to get you as close as possible, and you were pretty close. And then mine looks like a freaking cabbage patch kid head shape over there. I think they look great. Um, so where I was going with this before you guys were explaining it is this is such an easy way to occupy your children. If you have children at home, how about making it, how cool do they think they would be of being a police sketch artist? And give them a paper and then while you're stitching, because I know y'all want to stitch, describe a picture of something that, that you know, and have them draw it. What did you say? He's got chest hair like a shag carpet. I was like, have imagine. them draw it and, and you know, play that out. And it's great because it like helps with their memory. Because I was telling Samantha, okay, well, this guy's glasses looks a lot like somebody we know. It's almost like the exact same type of glasses. So then she would try and draw his glasses. And, and, and this is also something you can do with social dis distancing. If you're talking to your grandchildren over the phone, say, hey, I'm going to describe this to you. I want you to draw it for me. And describe. Like, describe it. Um, you know, depending on their age, you know, draw a square. And on top of the square, draw a circle. And on top of that circle, draw a triangle if they're younger ages. And, you know, and, and then, of course, this is a little bit more elaborate, but... Um, you can do that over the phone and they can send you a picture and then you can say, wow, what a great job. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Draw draw bridge. Make a big square. Maybe picture a castle in your brain and have them draw the shapes and, and have that conversation. And you can do that over the phone. You can do that on FaceTime. You can do that from across the table. You can do that while you're stitching and your children are in your home. I don't know where she keeps writing. I got off another to. idea. This is what so when we're at work, um, on on break, obviously. Uh, when I worked in the one section, there was this one guy that would kind of like pass around little sticky notes, and he oh. would have like part of it done. So the one thing he did was um, he had two slats like this, and he's like, "All right, you have the job you have to do is draw a bridge." And so people would go really creative. Um, on mine, I made a little bridge of like the little Mario Kart turtle shells and made Mario run across of it, and that was my bridge. And one person wrote the word bridge and put a line underneath of it. So it was, it's fun because it's like you get to see how people interpret things differently. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more creative. I want so, to do that at school. That'd be fun. Okay, what else you got? That's it. Well, you guys painted your nails? Oh, yeah, yeah. We painted our nails. That took like <laughs> four hours, I like it felt like. I consider myself a beginner at the uh, art, <laughs> art of nail. <laughs> nail art. Okay. Well, um, Rachel, what are those books over there? Well, I know what else that they've been doing is playing rummy. Um, if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen pictures my husband has posted because they've been down here playing Rummy. Rummy 500. It's addictive. It gets, oh my gosh, it is so competitive and it stinks because like you see a card and you're like, oh man, I could really go for it. And then you have to take like half the deck and somebody's done and you're like, oh my god, I'm in the negatives. <laughs> so if you're socially isolated and you don't have anybody in here that you can play cards with, play solitaire. Um, that's an, or play a matching game. Pull out a deck of cards. I'm sure that there's somewhere Learn in your junk drawer, someplace. Um, so some other ideas to help fill your time. Redecorate. 
Yeah, I, I, of, like, cool we, we did do that. We um, Actually, I, we organized my stitching room, um, and we're still in the midst. I am surprised at how many projects I have kitted and haven't started. I'm not. And I have so <laughs> many more surprises of all the stuff I have in haul that I haven't kitted yet that I can't Jeez. wait to start. So. I feel like every time I talk to you, you're starting a new project. I am, but and I And then I went into your too. craft room, and I was like, have you even, have you finished one? <laughs> I've finished a bunch. So, um, I promise you it won't be this video, but there will be videos in, in the, the future. future. Um, and I will give you a walkthrough of our stitchy room. Fair enough? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's your stuff. <laughs> a lot of it's my stuff. Is it safe to paint dog snails? Probably I not. don't know. Why are we having these conversations on video? Because it's Rachel. I'm I just trying to think of fun things for people to do at home. Okay. I All right, also Samantha, my anything bookshelf. else you want to talk about? I reorganized my bookshelf, and I'm very happy with how it's all placed. Okay. Organized. I've been watching a lot of floss tube. Well, not a lot, but a good bit. Um, Between I, the news. Since our last video, I have been very ill. Um, actually, I had to take a couple of days off of work because of feeling sick. Had sinus infection. It was not the virus. Um, I just had a sinus infection that really kicked me in the butt. So, um, stitching challenges have kind of been off the table. I've just been kind of stitching whatever I felt like and then sleeping a lot. Um, and just this past week started feeling better, getting my voice back. Um, where I feel better so I have been watching more floss tubers and I got to give a shout out to this one because it made me laugh um, if you're not watching married with stitches I got to tell you you need to watch married with stitches they were hilarious um, I think it's Derek and Christian um, they do have Fortnite fabrics they do their own fabric dyeing and they do auctions but their last video, they usually do one every other week or every two weeks. I guess that is every other week. And their last video, they were like <laughs> survivors of the apocalypse. And kudos to them for trying baby food to survive on. <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad for their dogs because I don't think the baby food's going to be there for the next time. Um, um, so you'll know what I'm talking about. Watch their videos. They are they are pretty funny. Um, are you ready to... Is there anything else we should have before we head into winter? Any other floss tubers? Have you watched any floss? Well, I know you haven't. Have you watched any floss tubers we want to talk about? Okay. No, there's just you know, a lot of news. There's a lot. There's a lot. Lindy Stitches has got some, some stuff out. There's a lot of market videos out. So, you know, this video is probably going to be longer than our normal. Um, hopefully it all works. And, and it hopefully it will give you something to watch for a while and get your mind off of things. So, um, how about we talk whips? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Oh. I, don't ha I haven't stitched at all. I've been reading. All right, I'm going to do my whips first, and then we're going to have Rachel show her whips. Um, whips okay, whips. so some of my whips anyway. <laughs> so one of my whips is Lyra. I have been working on Lyra for a good bit. Um, Here you go. Oh, thank you. So I worked on Lyra when I wasn't feeling very well and I made a lot of progress. There were a lot of challenges I was in the process of doing. Samantha's going to insert a picture here Just hold this somewhere Just put it um, my face. about how I used it, how it looked before and I'm trying to You're see. in the camera. Right here. Okay. You're in the middle. And this is where I'm at right now. So I have made a lot of progress on Lyra. I'm in a lot of confetti right now. Um, but hopefully you can see um, I've made it also one of the things that I use my full coverage is, is to tour all the national parks and Lyra has over 4,000 stitches on it this year um, because we got to the park of arches with her and I've started on the next park um, so kudos that that one so, Rachel I'm going to hand these to you if you, you want to just put them in me. that basket right oh. there beside you that one actually goes in that bag the monkey bag or the Christmas bag? The that Christmas bag. bag. You Sorry, Christmas bag. It too. The other project that I have been working on has been my monkey on the toilet. What is it called? Dress monkey on the throne. And this is the pattern. Is that the monkey that I named? This is the monkey you named. What did you name her? Harold. <laughs> she Harold? Named what? Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. And I this is as far as I've gotten. And Samantha will show where I was the last time. I, this might have been a new start since the last time. No, I did show it last time, I think. But she will show where we were the last time. 
and this is where I'm at now. We just started the little window. I haven't gridded, so I'm much more contained on this because I didn't pre-grid this fabric. It is on an Ada, I think this is an 18 count Ada um, that I had from a Michaels or someplace that I picked up. Probably. This goes into the monkey bag along oh, with this. That makes sense. Thank you. I like what you did there. You like that? Um, I Ooh, think... I see a finish. Thing. Well, the rest of what I have are finishes. So... Wow. I know, right? I, I got one that's a finish and a start, a start and a finish, but... Rachel. Let's show you what you got. Show us what you got. Well, I just remembered I had one. The one I was looking for I thought was in my Ronnie bag. And uh, it's actually not. I know where it's at. It's at home. Okay. But that's thanks because that's the one I'm like pretty much done with. Wait, I actually am done with that. I was supposed to bring it here so you could... Wait, did you teach me how to finish that? We sent you videos on how to finish them something. It was the witch. Oh. Mm. Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, so what you got anyway. Well, as I said before, I'm really busy, so I don't get a chance to stitch very often. Um, so this, can you put it up? Mm -hmm. Is uh, it's a little I can't adult today <laughs> kit. Yeah, it's a little kit. I got that far into it about a while ago. Uh, like I said, I don't really stitch very often. I used to minimally, but now Hopefully I just. It's, and this is a dimensions kit. So, I can't adult today, so, and that's her start off. Okay? Yeah, I don't get a, I don't really get a yeah. chance to stitch. Shoot, I came over here, came up for the weekend, and still working on school projects and stuff. This next one is one that's that my mom hard. got me. It has a little Halloween, and, uh... This is also, this is an artist kit. Um, probably came from Michael's. I would guess. Michael's or it's Hobby Lobby. It's on his Weigart fabric. Yeah, or Hobby Lobby. I think it's a Hobby Lobby, actually. Um, but it says Halloween. And I got the house in the moon, and she said, I like that. So I said, here, this will be a good one for you to keep learning on. So I passed the stash off to her, and she's not put one stinking <laughs> stitch in it since I gave it to her. So... <laughs> I like my whole bag of like some of the stitching stuff and I like whipped this out and I was like, what the heck yeah. did I do this? And I was like, oh wait, I didn't. Yeah, no, she has not done that. So. And uh, that's all I got. And I gave her a Halloween bag to put the Halloween project in that she's not stitched. So maybe we can shame her into it at this point. There we go. I am a Ooh. busy college student, okay? You should I be know. happy I'm not spring I don't want breaking yours in, in my Miami. stuff. Put yours in your own stuff. Any other whips that you have? No, that was it. That's all I got. Okay. Sorry. So, Samantha, are you okay if we move forward with the finishes? I don't got anything. I mean, okay. the only finish I got was my book, so. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to have a combination of finishes and hauls. So, um, guess what? I finally finished Seize the Day. This is done, done, and done. It will go into the pool noodle roll-up, if you're not sure what that is. Look at our earlier videos. I talked about video. rolling things onto a pool noodle to help store them. That's um, why you had pool noodles. There you go. But she only needs one. I don't know why she has four. Because um, so they're filling up. And it actually helps so that it doesn't be. things don't get wrinkled and it keeps them kind of all in one place. Um, anyways, this is on a 32 count Jobelin fabric called Sea Foam, and it's a hand dyed by Stephanie. And this was a mystery sow by the Caterpillar Cross Stitch that they started last, I believe, last June. Um, and I finally, finally finished it. So. And I'm still half done. And I am <laughs> glad it's done. Um, it was a fun stitch, don't get me wrong, but it really doesn't go with anything I have here. It was my first mystery sampler. I'm not a big fan of mystery samplers because, I don't know, maybe if it was the something that went with my I, I like to see what it's going to turn out like before I spend the time and effort into putting everything into it so I know here you go I didn't put that over there the other finish was a start and a finish this year um, actually this past week, this week. Um, and this one is in my haul of the primitive needle oh, um, the and punch back. punch needle primitive yeah it's on the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. This is part of my haul as well. This is their spring issue. I am a um, avid subscriber to this magazine. If you're not, I highly encourage you to. The, the 
the um, paper is thick, glossy, well put together. Um, they usually talk about, there's a, a, a shop that they highlight, an LNS that they highlight and talk about where it's come from. Um, in this or this one, I want to see, because I didn't get all the way through this, but in this one they talk about our featured shop is the Inspired Needle. Um, and they have pictures of the shop and different ways you can contact them, a couple pages, how they came about. But what spoke to me in this book this time that I just had to stitch right then and there was Spring Hair Etching by Cecilia Turner. And it's a heart and hand needle art design. And this is what it looks like in the book, in the magazine. Hopefully you can see that. I, at the same time, also got a needle or threads from Victoria Motto in my, my um, floss of the month. And I had gone digging and found some Gentle Arts Dark Chocolate. And I used Green Sampler. This is a DMC conversion of 3052 from Victoria Motto. And this is Sweetheart Roses as well. Hopefully you can see those. But the combination of those three beautiful colors I managed to put together on, um, if you, Michaels and all of them, all these craft places typically will have Ada stretched over wood. So there's wood behind, it's like a wood frame. Um, so I, it was the right size. I added a few extra stitches to make it sure it was, would fit. And I made some, some changes. I'm hoping that this stuff doesn't wash out. If it does, Samantha will put a picture. It's hard to tell on the video um, if the colors are washing out, but I did the bunny rabbit and dark chocolate, and I made my tulips have green stems and pink buds. So hopefully that doesn't wash out. When you're doing the video, if it does, make sure you get pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there is that, and now I can put that away. This is a finish. And we talked about the punch needle book, which was a haul. Um, the other finish that I had was Little House Needleworks, Early American. This is the first one in the series, but I put mine in a different order because I, may, I have the whole set. I'm making it into a bell pole, and I'm using this, um, converting everything to Valdani threads. Okay? What's a bell pole? Bell pole is, it's narrow and they're typically longer and they usually have a tassel down at the bottom or something instead of it being a big square it's narrow and they're usually like like this is a little bit wide but it's going to have two four six uh, i think eight there's going to be four down and then one is going to be shared at the bottom between the two that has the liberty bell that's part of the set so this is all my scroll rods. This is the second one of the series that I finished. Try and put this back here. So you can see I have um, John Hancock as my first block and then I just finished Betsy Ross so as my second block. And I'm really hoping this isn't washing out. But for some reason I think it is. Um, and I didn't bring my I did not bring my paper down here, but I believe this is a light gray fabric. It's a 32 count um, even weave, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I, I put it on tags with my floss and I left the floss upstairs in my stitching room because I have been stitching on this because today I had to, for a challenge, had to stitch on something with a square border. I believe that was for the daily 30 challenge that is happening for the monthly I believe I could be wrong I've got a couple different groups I participate in so I started so I guess this would be a whip and that would be Martha Washington and so that is where I'm at and I needed this for a um, school magical stitches challenge because stitch on something with letters 300 stitches so Martha Washington is my letters so I am working on that. That is a work in progress. So those are the whips. So how, hopefully you like that. Can you slide that into there? Ooh. And go ahead and put this over there. Actually, I'll give you this to put over there. 
Um, so those are my whips. Are you guys ready for a haul? Oh. Are you ready? Okay, so in no particular order. Where did this come from? I don't know. I had it upstairs. Um, and I apologize because I don't have some of my flosses. Not that I was not sent them. I was. I have. I get Victoria Motto Floss of the Month. I do six of the limited edition and six of something else. I don't know what it is. But anyway, in the because of using it and pulling it for the different projects, because I couldn't wait to use it, and I kind of haphazardly might have mixed some things together that shouldn't have been mixed together, and I might have put some away that shouldn't have been put away because, you know, whatever. But I am going to show you these four. So I do have these four, plus the other ones that I've shown you. I just am not 100% sure it came in this month's shipment or if it was previous. And this is thanks to a viewer that sent me in Samantha some Victoria Motto threads. And I used them for a Merry Christmas project and loved them and got immediately online and signed up for the um, Floss of the Month so I could start building a set of these on Victoria Motto threads. I really like them. They're soft. They're not silk, but they are nice and soft. And I don't know. I like them. Uh, some of them come with a DMC conversion. Some of them don't. Um, this is old Aztec. The next one is um, Bentwood Basket. And then there's Dresden Quilt, which is that pretty pink. And then the last one here is Spring Green Goddess. And that one does have a DMC conversion of 164. And I plan on finding a way to store these um, that I can kind of swap out color. So I'm still kind of working it out in my head how I want to do this. I may do a pegboard. I might do something completely different. Um, that I can visualize these so I can swap them out for the other colors and patterns if I want to. Because I think if you see them, you're more apt to use them. And I'm afraid if I hide them, not really hide them away, but hide them away like I store our DMC floss, which is back in previous videos, um, you don't see it, so you're not necessarily going to grab to that. So I'm trying to put some of those specialty flosses more visible for me so that I can swap them out in areas that I think that they would be beneficial. So there is that. We've been doing a lot of organizations. We have been doing a lot of organizations. Let's put some shelves um, together. I am also in a Fabric of the Month Club from Under the Sea Fabrics. And mm -hmm. you're going to get a crinkle, sorry. Um, this is Calliope. It is a 32 count Lugana and hand dyed by Under the Sea Fabrics. Leslie, I mean, I don't know if you can see that, mm -hmm. if it's washing it out. To me, it looks washed out on this end of the camera, but I can't tell what you see on your end. But it's pinks and purples and blues like and oh, candy. this is yeah, like cotton candy. But it's exactly. Pretty. This is going to have one of my Mirabilia girls on it. I have decided this mm -hmm. is going to be Mirabilia fabric. Mm -hmm. I have another blue one that I want to put one of the Mirabilias on. I just you just got to start them. Just got to start them. What are you saying? I'm saying me. You don't get any of this until you finish some of that. No, no, I don't know what. Oh, I thought when you were saying memorabilia, I'm thinking. Mirabilia. Mirabilia. They are. Um, I know it was a brand name. It is. Until you kept on saying, saying it. It is. And I can show you some of them upstairs if you ever want to see them. They're really pretty. I love They do mermaids. You would love the mermaids. I love you making a mermaid on that one. I'll bet you would. <laughs> All you guys that have done Mirabilia's, you're probably laughing to yourself right now like I am. Is it um, those it's heads, pretty ladies? Heads? Hades? Hades? No, it's not a hade. That's a heaven and earth design. I mean, well, I'm saying like a project like a that extreme. All right, so lots of haul. I got to tell you, before we went on lockdown, like all there, there is a shop a in Newcastle, um, is which is close. If you're in the northwestern Pennsylvania area, um, this shop is run by an elderly woman. She does it out of her basement. Her hours are a little bit, um, she, she is open and you can, she encourages you to call ahead because her and her husband are elderly. Um, she's been in business there, she said over 30 years, um, but because they're elderly, they have medical conditions and they do sometimes have to close the shop for medical appointments, what have you. So she encourages um, to call ahead. Um, and they'll let you know if they're going to be there. Um, I needed some floss for something because she has 
a lot of different things but again it's run out of her basement it's like a little mini shop in her basement it's not entirely hugely bright um, and she does have some dated patterns she's got some prairie schooler patterns there's things that she is very much um, you can tell her her eclectic style um, she's got a lot of Plum Street samplers she's got I did talk to her about getting some Teresa Kogut because you'll know when I do my haul those are not probably good to put in your ears. I'm not but putting them in my ear. I'm trying to pinch them. And I was going to be like, I can't do it. Yeah, no, you can't do it. So I got two bags because I did it. It's me. Um, so I'm going to share with you what I purchased. And I have some kindness for a young lady. Looking at her. You're uh, the middle sister. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like the middle child. You remind me. Stitch that more, I'll get day. you more. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to so work. And I have school. Plum Street Sampler Home for Christmas. Oh, I should have taken these out so you guys can see them. I wasn't expecting to have all that glare. Everybody take pity on me. Take what pity on Rachel. No, it's typical so Melinda. All right, so Plum Street Sampler I'm Home for Christmas. Um, I Shopping. got this one that I really like. Um, there's a Lizzie Kate that I picked up too. Trick or Treat. That would be your Stitchy Kindness that you just took out. What, this? Yes. What's that? Oh. Oh, that's cute. You like that. So Samantha and I have been to this place before and she has a lot of models stitched um, on the on behind the register that you can see all these models um, and so Samantha said she really liked this specific thing that she had stitched wasn't it this one I thought it was this I one I never stitched anything like that no but I thought you saw this stitched and you liked it oh yeah you said after oh, okay. we left I, I wish you would have gotten that I really liked it oh yeah, yeah oh yeah 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 so this is by Brenda Gervais it's called Christmas tea and it's a stitchy kindness that I'm giving to Sorry. Samantha. I didn't really acknowledge it. I just saw a bag and decided to open it's, it for you. I did not know what the heck I was looking at for quite It's some got time. the two mice yeah. on top of the teacup. I and couldn't I couldn't see mice's, the mice. mice. I thought like that was his head and I was like, Well where's That's the a teapot. Well it's from So that was for you. See? I see it now when I Okay. So that I got I for you. Um I keep digging into the bag. I got picture this plus legacy fabric. Um, this is 28 count. I got a pretty big hunk um, because oh I keep hearing God. everybody talk about legacy fabrics. And when I say I got a hunk, look. Oh, that's a hunk. I got a hunk. This was like a leftover piece, and I said I'll just take the rest. So it's like a yard. What happened to all extra? That's the, how does it not fall apart? Because it's woven together. Um, so this is picture this plus legacy and it's a 28 count Lugana and I just said give me the rest of what you have um, because I keep seeing a lot of people using legacy fabric and it looks really good and I thought this might be one of my backgrounds on one of my samplers so um, that's going to go into my stash okay digging in I also picked up this is called Eek it's a 28 count Lugana and it's from Picture This Plus as well. And I saw this piece and I know these are odd cuts. See, that's okay. It's still, I can you stitch can smaller things this. on the smaller pieces and I'm okay with that. Um, I like the color. It's kind of peachy. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of peachy. It's got some grays yeah. modeling in there um, and it's called Eek. So. Why are you laughing at my eek? <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it's right. something that'll work for some smaller projects. It might be a Halloween thing that goes on there or a spring rabbit. Yeah, it looks you more know. springy than Yeah, Halloween. it might be a spring thing. It's like fall. Um, I also got, while I was there, I actually went to try and get fabric for Night Walk Down. Or like to friend. get um, oh, colors oh, for no. Night Walk Down, but unfortunately couldn't and because it was limited edition and they didn't have it so what i did however get is i got i'm gonna try and i got some um gentle arts dragonfly 
Um, Bear de Gras, Dragonfly, Bear de Gras. There's a lot of variegation Lagoon. in these. Here's Lagoon. Um, dragonfly again. Yeah, I got a couple of Bird Dragonflies. Gras. Autumn leaves. Autumn leaves. And another bird nice gross. Gold. Yeah, I was thinking about the dress um, and what colors I would maybe use on the dress for night walk down. So that's why I picked a couple of these um, that were the same. I got a couple of skeins because I really like the variegation. Walk. Nope. So I got some floss. I think I'll leave it. Um, I also got... Now, I had ordered this a while ago, and i got to ask you guys, because I've never gone, I don't know, I, I got, I ordered, asked her to order Murky, well, she orders a yard at a time, so she ordered a yard, and I really didn't think I needed a yard, so I said, oh, I'll just take a half a yard of it. Um, I didn't realize there's a difference, maybe there is, I was thinking about on the way home, that maybe I should have said a fat half, um, because it's cut odd. I got a half a yard, but it's cut. Why would they do that like that? She cut it like this, and I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention. Um, so I got a long piece <laughs> of murky. Um, yeah, a little bit. I got I a long piece of murky. But for those of you that are out there or shop owners, is that something I should be more specific with, or was this just, like I said, she's Maybe she just wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't there when she was cutting it. I just told her, give me a half a yard. And um, I thought it would be like a fat half. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, maybe I didn't. I wasn't clear. So that's okay. I will find a project for it. I just thinking maybe I wasn't clear. So you can make two hopefully you can see that. So yeah, it's, it's even really. Saw, those holes are tiny. So. They're tw it's 28 count. I believe it's 28 count. That might be 32. No, I think that's 28. It might be 32. I'm pretty sure it's 28 count. Murky. Um, so, the shop that I'm talking about is called the Log House Needle Workshop. Um, her hours are Tuesday through Friday. Actually, it's Tuesday through Saturday. She told me Saturday she's open as well. From 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, they're open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, they're on Mohawk School Road, Newcastle, PA. Um, when I went in to see her, um, she said I was the first person that's been in there for two weeks. So, um, and this was before, it was right before they did the lockdown of everything. So, I just want to help out my local shop. So, please, you know, I'll put a picture of her card off, Samantha. Let me put on here, Saturday hours, too. Um, she said she didn't even realize it wasn't on the card. I think she's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays, but I'll put a question mark because I'm not entirely 100% sure. So I'll have Samantha put that on the end. And she gave me, while I was there, a um, needle travel book. So I don't know if you have a needle travel book. They retail for $10, $9.95 is what it says on the back. But it has all different shops and all across the state. So I thought this is going to be fun. Um, it's a needle travel. has all kinds of different shops in it. Quilting shops, everything. I have this app. And I went, that's how I found this place. I pulled up the needle traveler app. Um, and I searched for cross stitch shops. And the log house came up. I will suggest if you use that app to call ahead first. Because I had driven to places that I was like, oh, I didn't know that that was right there, and I got there, and they are no longer in business, but it's still popping up on the app, so there's my words of wisdom for you for that. Okay, so crinkles. Um, <clears throat> if you're still with us, please consider subscribing um, to our channel. We do giveaways, and we're going to do giveaways at the end of all of this video as well because I want to brighten somebody's day. Oh, the other thing I got that she's over here hiding from this shop is Holiday Quaker. And I meant to look because I might have this. Um, this is a Lila Studio Holiday Quaker. I don't know why you try. I know. I keep trying, but... Um, oh, that's a old... Holiday Quaker um, by Lila Studio. Samantha can take a closer up picture. I'm going to kind of leave things together so when she's editing tomorrow while I'm at work, 
um, she can potentially take better pictures and put into the video. I would so um, this. Oh, I, would so I would too. That's why I got it. There's like six places. Like, well, you can hit them all up on my, on your way down to where I live. One, two. Uh -huh. Three for sure, okay. And I've gone to go. some of them. They're quilt shops. And then we okay. can continue going, and then we can get that one in there. Okay, so apparently we've got a road trip planned. Okay, <laughs> so now we come to the segment of our video of Market Hall. Uh, so that was a segment where we don't know what else to I'm going to make this relatively quick because a lot of this you have seen in all the market videos. I did order most of my market haul from Sassy Jack Stitchery. Um, that's Kimberly Young. She is out of North Carolina. She does do online sales, just so you are aware if you're interested. Um, when I jokingly said to virtual stitchers, Teresa Kogut owns my wallet, truly, Teresa Kogut owns my wallet. So, here we go. You're going to find out why. This, oh, there's my floss. <laughs> hey, remember I said I knew I got more floss? I did. I like how come Primitive Floss to Club, limited edition. Here's the other, where's the board? I think I gave it off already. Oh, here it is. Here's the primitive edition, the flosses <gasps> that I hadn't um, had out. I thought I'd put them somewhere. Blacksmith, priming, prim sailing. Um, warm Bush DMC Conversion 3774 in Orchard Plum. So really pretty, pretty, pretty colors. I could not find these. I didn't know what happened to them. And I just assumed I put them in a project somewhere already. You're really trying to build up suspense and you just let that all go out the window. <laughs> oh, well, I got, uh, okay. These are the um, limited edition Rustic Bin. Little blue essential rise and shine, really pretty orange rise and shine. This one is midnight dark, and this one is canyon sunrise. So, oh my, these are pretty colors, really pretty colors. So, hopefully, you see them if you're looking up. Um, I don't know, she's got that many different groups that you can join um, with her threads. All I can say is I've not been disappointed. There, There's a lot of floss on these cards. I have definitely not been disappointed. The colors are beautiful. They're consistent. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, so. Okay, so. Haul. Treats of Koget owns my wallet. Came in this box. Take the box. Okay. All right, here we go. First one, Teresa Kogut's Creative Whim, celebrating 15 years of needlework with 15 patterns. So, I don't know if you have this or you don't have this, but I'm going to tell you, it is definitely worth the price. Sorry, I'm just picking them up. Good Here's gracious, Pongo. there's Pongo. Um, it is definitely worth the price. There are beautiful patterns in here. Um, I can't show them to you because there's, there's not really any... It's just, it's the pattern, and they're not, it's not something I can show you, but I definitely highly recommend it. So I have that. I got um, <clears throat> the Thread Needle Street by Annie B's Folk Art. We don't say goodnight till our stitching's complete. That's how we roll here on Thread Needle Street. So I really like that. I'm, I'm just, definitely a fan. Um, I have Little Pink Houses. This is another Annie B's Folk Art. Um, and it's got, <laughs> that's what it says, Little Pink Houses, some alphabets. Definitely ready for that. Sorry, don't mind me. It's okay, I'm just showing. I got the Blue Flower, the Summer Squirrel. Um, I've got some squirrels, the winter, the summer. I think I have a spring. I um, haven't stitched them yet, but I continue to collect them. Um, so the Summer Squirrel by um, Blue Flower and Acorns and Threads. She, she um, goes there a lot, and I think that's in the northern, northwestern by Jin, Jin, the blue, the bum. My tongue's getting tied. The Blue Flower designer is Janine McGowan. 
and that's Summer Squirrel. Then we have Teresa Kogut, and be ready for Teresa Kogut is going to be the next bunch, I'm sure. Um, I'm trying to get them out so that you don't get the glare. Did you show this already? No, I haven't shown any of them. Sorry. Okay. And I can't get this one out. Well, oh, Teresa, you plug that in there tight. Um, this is Teresa Kogut's Hope for the World. And I liked it because it's got the Santa face and it's also got in there a nativity scene. And I really like that. And it looks like it's basically full coverage, but Santa's holding a nativity of scene. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. So I like that. Switch me. Switching you. Okay, here's Teresa Kogut Bell Snickles. And these have three snowmen, or three snowmen, three Santas. It says Merry Christmas. And it's called Bell Snickles. Coat then I got this one more as a gift by Brenda Gervais and it is salt box quilt sampler I have quilters in my life um, so and I really this spoke to me I don't know if I'll take pieces of it or if I'll do the whole thing but these That's quilters that I love um, that support me in my cross stitching I want to support them and give them some love back um, so I really like that. And you're not sewing machine. Um, Sassy Jack Stitchery included this. It's really kind of cool. It's just a card, but it's got the measuring on the side, so you can get that three-inch border if you want um, to for your starting point, which I thought was a nice little perk. Um, they also sent me a picture of Marianne um, Frayne, 1796. Sassafras samplers. Um, she does do her own samplers. And this is um, like a sticker that you put on the back of your project. Um, talks about what the what it is once you finish it, um, and that's their their squirrel that is part of their squirrel. I also got, um, and I'm only going to open this one. I got two of these. This is a market um, only release for right now, and we are going to be doing this as a giveaway. And I am keeping one for me, and I'm going to be giving one. This is Hannah's Garden. It's the 20th anniversary. It was a reboot, I guess. And this says, weeds are flowers, too, once you get once you get to know them. So, and this is Hannah's Garden. And I have two of those. And it was a market, um, whatever you call it. You know, I can't think. So we're going to get, be giving that one away. Is it giveaway? A giveaway? this one that's not been opened because I think when it's a market exclusive release um, I don't want to wait until we reach a thousand subscribers I think I think we need to go ahead and do that release because I think that the designers can then release like in a few months so I want to get it out and get into somebody's hands that would be interested and would want to stitch Hannah's garden what should be the word for um, garden okay. um, we also have Teresa Kogut Strutton, which is one of her new releases, and I just thought it was cute. My mom collects Santa Clauses, and this one's got Santa with reindeer strutting with his nose up in the air, so I really like that one. I love this one. Rachel, this is a sampler. Oh. See all the different motifs? Guess what sampler I got? Teresa Kogut's. Guess which one it is? Teresa Kogut's. Heaven and Nature, which is, I'm probably going to put this on that legacy picture of this plus fabric. I may go with something lighter, but that one maybe. Um, so this is Heaven and Nature. Um, this is by Teresa Kogut, and I'm somebody put a post that they found 40 count even weave. I don't know where they found it. I can't remember which video I was watching, but if you know where I can find 40 count even weave, I'd like to try it. I'm not brave enough to do 40 count linen, but I will try 40 count even weave because that's where my comfort level is with the even weave. But you can see like the deer, there's an owl and their butts, there's birds, see the numbers, the alphabet, the rabbit, you know, the houses, flowers, all that stuff. This is a sampler. What's the difference between like cross stitch and like embroidery? Like, my question, like, you know, like, back in the good old days, like... When it was blue? No, men had, like, suits and the handkerchiefs, or the women had handkerchiefs in the little corner and had, like, their little initials. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, excuse me, 
and then hand them like uh, the uh, handkerchief. Uh, is that like can you, is that like cross stitch or is that like an embroidery embroidery? That's in that is kind of the same. It's the stitched on it. I don't know if there's really distinct difference other than different stitches that you use that would cross I'm stitch looking, or crosses. Because I'm like, and embroidery is like the other stitches. Because I'm like looking at all like the fabrics you're using, and I'm thinking this would be kind of this wouldn't be like no Charmin Ultra Soft. Kind no, of you don't blow wiping. your nose on it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Well, okay. The corner. This is from Lindy Stitches. Everybody's seen it. Mary Mary Needleworker, and she does it in two colorways. Um, Mary Mary Needleworker, how does your garden grow? With hand dyed fabric, floss, and pins, and scissors lined up in a row. How cute is that? And it's got all kinds of different motifs on it. I know everybody has seen it. That belongs in a book. I'm going to give that back to you. What? This so is why? another Teresa Kogut. Here, go ahead and pull that out. Oh, Sassy Jacks also gave me a, a stitching needle I just found. Okay, um, the other item I got from Teresa Kogut is, is, okay, Pet All the Dogs. And that is a sampler of sorts, I would say. Pet All the Dogs, Hug All the Cats. There's two patterns in this. Um, in our house, we're dog people. Um, so I will be stitching this. This has pet all the dogs. I really liked it. It was more the house and the border, I think, that, that got me in. Mm. It's got a cute little line of dogs down on the bottom with little hearts in between them. See? No, oh, okay. And it just, I think it was the house really that pulled me in. I don't know. Um, so I really liked it. I'm probably going to switch out some of the colors, but I really liked it. Okay. The other and last but not least... Teresa Kogut's Newcastle Bouquet. I really like this. The, this, is, this is why I originally got that Legacy fabric, because I thought that this would look beautiful on that fabric. Um, it's just going to be, it's a big one. Don't let these pictures fool you. This one is 353 stitches wide and 217 stitches high. So it is not a small one by any oh, means. Pretty. Isn't that pretty? That border is that just border really goes I wow. Look. Those birds. Let me see. Let me see. That's pretty. Cool. Look at the moth down here. I like it better. Those blue jays. I think it'd make it pop. There's a lot of red. There is a lot of red. That's why it's called Newcastle Bouquet. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So I'll let you put that back in. Did you even show it? I did. Oh. Okay. So we're gonna put everything back in the box because. Once Samantha does her editing, she may need to take better pictures. And if you didn't see them, I apologize. You can look them up. I told you, you what their names were. Like yeah, we're just I'm just kind of putting it all into one box in case you need to take pictures. We know where it's at. Okay. Um, you know what? You can tell us Teresa lady to get better bags. <laughs> Teresa Kogut. Um, I really I'm like her designs. And as I've been um, organizing in my stitching room. I was surprised at how many of her designs I have kitted ready to go that I haven't started yet that will be started. I'm really excited to get some of these going. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm really excited. I mean, I know some people will buy from market and then they won't, they won't start it until the following year because they've already got a bunch. I just think, you know what, once I start it, it's no, I mean, you just go with it and put it in your whip pile. It'll eventually get done. Um, I am not a starter. I am definitely not a serial starter. That's the worst part of doing. She's a serial doing. kidder. I would much <laughs> rather stitch on a project that's already been started. Um, I like going to my whip pile. I like looking at what I have and pulling something out and sitting and stitching on that I feel like stitching on. I don't like starting because then I have to kit it up and I don't like kitting it up and then once you kit it up then I don't feel like stitching on it. I wish somebody who might be bored, you know, um, being home on from school. It's a good thing I'm very entertained. Delve into my DMC floss and start putting some of these things together into kits. Wouldn't that be a wonderful surprise? Okay. Maybe for your birthday. Maybe for my birthday. All right, so let's talk about new giveaways. We are over 800 subscribers, and I think that is fantastic. 800 people want to hear us ramble on. 
Oh, 807 people. I can't people. forget those seven people. There's 807 seven. people out there in this world want to listen to us ramble on. So, thank you very much for coming and visiting us on our channel. And thank you very much for sharing your time with us. If you are still here and you now met the another one of the daughters, um, please subscribe um, below. Uh, we try to do a video in the summer. We were doing a video every week. Um, when school started, it kind of has come down to it's every like, two like weeks, sometimes only of... once a month. Yeah. Um, but we do try and put videos out. We want you to know that we are well and we are, are following the guidelines put forth to us. Um, we want to share some love with the rest of you. So we are going to do a two giveaways. Ooh. Okay. Three giveaways. Actually, three. three. Okay, so the first giveaway we talked about already. I got this at Market. It's a Market exclusive. I got this per on purpose to share with somebody. Um, and it is Hannah's Garden. So please, in the comments, be, first, number one, you need to be a subscriber. Second, you need to be 18 or older in order to give me your actual physical address so I can send you your prize. And third, do not say giveaway in your comment. If you say giveaway in your comment, I will delete your comment. You, um, that is across the board. Do not say giveaway. Um, I do not need any of that. So do not say giveaway in the comment, but please use the keyword. That's how we do, we do random comment generator. We pull the specific word that we say. Um, Samantha can type the word down below for each of these items um, so that you can see it on the screen. If you're ever not sure how to spell it, I do ship internationally. Um, I think that if you take the time to watch my videos and, and to comment, um, sometimes you might get a heart. Right now, as busy as we are, you're probably just going to get a heart from me and it's going to be in the evening time when I'm winding my day down and I'm looking at your comments. So, um, I do respond and I'm trying to get better about bringing people into our videos that have responded and asked questions, so we're trying to put something like that together. Um, we just haven't been able to get there yet because work happened. So, this is Hannah's Garden. If you want to be entered in the drawing for Hannah's Garden, your comment needs to say <laughs> garden. G-A-R-D-E-N for Hannah's Garden. Okay? Did you write that down? Yes, I Okay. The next um, giveaway, I actually have two of them. They are Dimension Kits. And oh, it's Flower Mason Jar. And it comes with your floss and your Ada and a hoop. And there's probably a needle in there too. Um, I have two of these. And so pretty. So we will do two drawings for the flower mason jar. So if you were interested in being entered into the drawing for this, please in the comments say the word. Jar. <laughs> jar? Flower. You choose. Jar. Jar. Use the comment jar below. Now, as always, when we have multiple giveaways in the same video, when your name is drawn, it is for that item, and you are excluded from further drawings on that video. So that three different people will have the opportunity to win one of these items and not one person winning all three. Unless only one person wants the thing. Which? Okay. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Do you want to say anything? Yes. Sorry, you're gonna forget something. Welcome to Rachel's segment. Um, <laughs> I am the middle child, so I get often ignored, and everything ends up getting blamed on me. Because um, you're the troublemaker. It is, I, it's not, Samantha. I remember we were in the utility room, okay, and we were doing something, and you just started screaming out of nowhere and got me in trouble because you didn't want to do what I asked you to do to take the dogs out, and then I got yelled at for doing nothing. I don't remember. So that's okay, a choice. So middle child plight. Are you done venting to the whole rest of the world? No, um, I'm 21. Um, I work full time doing background checks and then I also go to school online so unfortunately I have yet to be quarantined and I'm not going to be able to get quarantined from work or school because I need to work and school is online so that freaking sucks but if I get activated then I'll just be even more stressed trying to keep up with all my work. Um, 
I don't have any dogs, but I do have a cat. His name's Marley. He's a little furry butthead sometimes. Um, he likes to wake me up to, for me to feed him. And it ranges from anywhere to 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. He doesn't let me sleep past 8.30. Um, sometimes he likes to like lay on my chest in the middle of the night. Earlier this week I woke up at like 3 o'clock in the morning with him like <laughs> this close to my face. <laughs> I screamed so loud I woke up Jesse and he's like, what? What's wrong? And I was like, nothing. Marley scared me. <laughs> um, I like to kayak. Uh, I'm really excited for the summer. Um, so I'll be out of classes for a little bit and then I can do some kayaking and camping and enjoying the sun and getting a tan. What tan? <laughs> um, I, what other things do I enjoy? Um, I enjoy messing around with Samantha and then making her mad. Um, AKA male child troublemaker. Yeah, but it's not like terrible things, okay? It's not like I'm punching you in the face and you're screaming bloody murder like you pretended I did. Let's see, what else? I dislike dishes. I dislike cleaning, but then you have to do it anyway. I definitely hate folding clothes. Okay. Anything else? Any last words? Wisdom. Um, I really hate school and I want to be done with it. But if I want a good paying job, I have to go to school. So, I don't know. I'm just excited I can actually talk. <laughs> so, that's, I think that's it. I, I wasn't expecting to be able to talk for so long. <laughs> So, that's all. <laughs> that's it. That's me. That's you? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to 500 after this. No. I said I, I would. I have to go pee so bad. I've been holding it and I was afraid to get up again because I thought you'd make a statement like, oh, there she goes again. So, I've been sitting here trying to distract myself. <laughs> T-M-I. <laughs> so, I'm keeping that all in. <laughs> to close this all up and wrap this all up, let's just say thank you. I love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time thank you for subscribing thank you for sharing your time with us and stay safe follow the guidelines stay home unless you wash your hands go out do not go out unless it's emergent remember your local stores if they can order online through their through your local stores do that um, keep them in business We'll get through this together. We've gone through other things. We'll get through this as well. So we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. P.S. Please don't take all the toilet paper. You don't need a whole cart full unless you live like the Duggars. I just buy a pack enough for everybody because some people need toilet paper, okay? That's Somebody stock appropriately.